Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to do help you a little bit with this exercise which has been a bit of a problem for most of you. It, it gives me this crazy expression, right, which looks very complicated and it asks me to express x in terms of y. Now before I do that, let's make sure we understand. The first thing we always do is make sure we understand the question. Now what does it mean to express x in terms of y? Well, what I do have here is y expressed in terms of x. I can throw in a variable, a value for x, and I get a value of y. Here's an example of what x expressed in terms of y <clears throat> could look like. Essentially, what I really have is here I have y alone on one side of the equation, the rest is x's, and they want me to have x alone on one side of the equation. Now, before I do that, I'd like to first analyze what my options are. I've got logarithms, and this is a natural logarithm. Remember, natural logarithm is simply log base e. And I have uh, the laws of logarithms, which I can probably use. And I want to point out one interesting thing here. This expression down here, I just want to recognize it right now. That it reminds me a lot of a minus b times a plus b equals a squared minus b squared, an identity that we studied some time ago. And I just want to realize that that's the case. Not that I really want to use it right now, but I'm just thinking, well, that might turn out to be useful later on. So, well, let's finish deleting this. Let's get started by using the laws of logarithms. That y is equal to the natural logarithm of x divided by x plus 2 plus the natural logarithm of 4 minus x squared and I can put these together also like this uh, x times 4 minus x squared divided by x plus 2 there you go that's pretty simple now what else can I do now? well I can now open up this using my identity And you know what happens now? Well, actually, mm -hmm. 2 plus x and x plus 2 are the same thing, so they cancel out. And I end up with this rather neat and simple expression just by using laws of logarithms and simplifying when I realized that notable identity was there. Okay, now moving forwards, I still seem to be getting no closer to my goal. Let's see how can we do that. Well, I'm going to use the basic rules, the basic definition of what a logarithm is. It means that e to the power of y is equal to this. So I'm just going to write that down straight away. You see, no more logarithms anymore. And now I can multiply this. Before I do the next step, I just want to put it together here, like this. And I want to invite you to pause the video now and look at this and I'm ask, telling you, you have to think a little bit outside the box to figure out now how to express x in terms of y. Maybe you've seen it already and it doesn't feel like outside the box at all. It's actually really straightforward, but I encourage you, pause the video. Give it a thought. Let's see if you can see how to finish the exercise right now. And, okay, so I'm going to do it for you in case you didn't think about it, or just to make sure that you understand it. Um, what I actually have here is a quadratic equation. And you might feel, well, but, but there's a y over there. And Sure, but basically a quadratic equation allows me to leave x equals and then whatever is the result of the quadratic equation. And that's exactly what they want me to do. So I can write this down like this. 2 plus or minus b squared, that's 4, minus 4ac for e to the power of y, divided by 2. So I get x is equal to 2 plus or minus uh, 2 
square root of 1 minus e to the power of y divided by 2. What I did here, I factorized the 4 and then I had 4 times and square root of 4 is 2, so that's what I get here. And now these 2's can cancel away because I can again factorize the 2 and I get that x is equal to 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus e to the power of y. And that would be my final answer. Now looking back at it, let's understand some basic things that happen here. First of all, I have to make sure I understood the question. I have to make sure I remember what a natural logarithm was. I realized that I could use the laws of logarithms and that I could probably break this down into my good old identity. That was one part of the difficulty. Then I used the basic definition of logarithm to turn the logarithms around. And finally, I had to think about using the quadratic equation. And there you go. This is how you do an exercise like this. And it takes about six minutes, as you can see. Well, I hope it helps, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.